if you're using an analogy of a tokamak as an engine and then the neutral beam system I guess is like a, a boost injector, like a nitrous injector. My name's Barney Stevens and I'm neutral beam engineer here at Tokamak Energy. The role here at Tokamak Energy is to put together um, a neutral beam system which has been supplied from Japan and assemble it onto the ST40. A neutral beam is a beam of high energy ions that we use to heat the plasma to temperatures in excess of hundreds of millions of degrees. You're generating a beam from hydrogen gas, you're generating ions in an ion source, accelerating them up to a high energy state and then firing them into the plasma where the energy that is generated inside the beam is transferred into the plasma. Ions need neutralising so that they can get into the magnetic confinement of the plasma. The way they are neutralised is the ion source we have generates positively charged ions which then are passed through a cloud of gas which neutralises the, some of the ions. The neutral ions can pass into the plasma and all the residual positive ions are dumped as wasted energy on the metalwork around the ion source. So these are our power supplies and eventually they will be connected to the source which is going to be one of our three beamline systems. The ion source is a plasma generator. This is an ion source. We inject hydrogen gas into a vacuum chamber. All on this back plate and all around the sides are magnets, permanent magnets, arranged in a certain pattern. There are 15 filaments inside this ion source. We pass huge currents in the order of thousands of amps through these filaments, which release electrons into the vacuum. We use an arc power supply to generate plasma and then on the other side, at the other end of this source, there are high voltage grids. So they are copper grids with holes in them and we have high voltage power supplies connected to those grids and they will accelerate the ions from the plasma generated in the source out to this iron source and into the top mat. These are all cooling pipes for the water cooling to remove the heat from the different components of the source. Um, there's no cabling on this currently all the cabling still in a pile, 40 quite large cables terminating the source to the power supplies. Hydrogen goes into this feed here, these are just isolators, and then we have these piezo valves which enable you to puff controlled amounts of hydrogen into the iron source. There's quite a lot of external equipment we need. We need vacuum systems, we need lots of cooling systems, we need gas introduction systems, but the main part of what we use are power supplies such as these power supplies behind us. We have three main power supplies. In the far distance we have a filament power supply which is thousands of amps of current. We have an arc power supply which is hundreds of volts and hundreds of amps of arc current to establish plasma. And we have a high voltage power supply which is in the order of 30 to 100 kilovolts high current which is there to generate high voltage to accelerate the ions. I've worked a small amount on the mast tokamak and also the jet tokamak at, at Cullum. A lot of those control systems I've worked on are machine protection systems to keep that energy inside the plasma because when the plasma disappears you need the energy to also stop very very fast. The combination of the physics and the engineering is very very interesting and very complex. I like the challenge of making that physics work from an engineering perspective. I'm a great believer in being able to produce a tokamak on a small scale, being able to produce commercially um, viable fusion.